First Thessalonians chapter 5. And you can be seated because I'm just going to walk through some verses. I mean, you can stay standing if you want to. But just want to get a little brief word of what God has put in my spirit. Several weeks ago for today, Paul's writing to a young Christian church in Thessalonica. He's giving them instructions and he's closing out this first epistle, this first letter to them. And he is seeking to get them to a place of maturity. Somebody say maturity. And here's how you tell the difference between a mature Christian and a lack of maturity. It has to do with consistency. Somebody say consistency. Anybody can do right for a minute. But can you live a faithful, dedicated, consistent life? Can you be consistent when your hormones are raging? Can you live consistent when a spirit of anger jumps on you? Can you be consistent when life is not going your way? How many of you know that you don't have to go and look for life not to go your way? Just keep living. So Paul says to them in verse 16, he says, here's what we want to do. Well, in verse 15, See that no one renders evil for evil to anyone, but always pursue what is good, both for yourselves and for all. You, you, you know you're mature when you have the capacity not to render evil back to somebody who's done evil to you. Go on and teach and preach, Pastor. I think I will. I'm just going to walk through this for just a couple seconds, and then, 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 then we'll go from there. Consistency, maturity. When I can do good to those, when I can love those that despitefully use me. When I don't retaliate and pay back and try to get back, but I just, I don't render evil for evil. Ask yourself the question now, am I planning to do something evil to somebody because they did me wrong? I said, ask yourself that question. Then he takes it a step higher, and in verse 16 he says, Rejoice always. It's easy to rejoice when there's money in the bank. Matter of fact, the word rejoice means to be cheerful, to be happy, to consider yourself well off. That's what rejoice means, that, that I have the capacity to look at the circumstances of life and recognize that it could be a whole lot worse than it is. I can't get no amens right there. I'm trying to get just a couple of people to understand. Rejoice always means at all times, I'm cheerful, I'm well off, I'm happy, I'm looking at my circumstances, and I'm recognizing that it could be a lot worse. I, I, I might want to complain because my shoes got holes in them, but the fact is I could have no feet. Come on, look at me for just a second. Rejoice always. God, maturity is when I have the capacity and I've matured to a place in life that I can rejoice all the time. Y'all ever talk to somebody who complains about everything? My 
My wife has a friend that just complains all the time. And it drains her. She doesn't even look forward to talking to the person because they just complain all of the time. Learn to be thankful. <laughs> then he takes it a step further. Here's, a, here's, here's, here's here. matter of fact, I'm calling this, me this message the maturity to give thanks. That's what I'm calling it, the maturity to be able to give thanks. Not only does he say rejoice, Always, but in verse 17, he says, pray without ceasing. There's the next thing he says, pray without ceasing. Again, you can shout when things are well easily, but can you shout when things are not going good? And you can pray when things are not going good. Can you pray without ceasing when things are going good? Y'all understand what I'm saying? It's... It's the call of the Lord to us that we should be in a constant mode of prayer. That, that, that we should be, and that word pray, it's a Greek word that means to direct your worship and the needs you have in your life toward God. See, some people get frustrated because they expect people to help them. And when people don't do what they want people to do, they get upset and angry. But this word pray, prosukamai, is the Greek word. Go on, Pastor, prosukamai. It means to direct it toward God. Direct your worship toward God. Direct your needs toward God. Direct your request toward God. Not to people, not to Capitol Hill, not to your congressman, not to, to your bank, not to your, your spouse, but to God and God alone. He says, be in that posture, not only to direct it toward God, but hold up, but also your worship toward God. That one word means make your request be made known to God, but it also means worship. Let your worship be directed toward God. That's where we are. We are a people here today who are saying, I am giving my praise and my worship and my adoration to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I didn't come to worship people. We're not here to sing songs to make you feel good. We're not here to celebrate you. We are here today to give thanks to the God who has brought us from a long way. And we're, we're mature enough to do it with no interruptions. That's what without ceasing means, without interruption. Nothing can interfere with my worship of God. Y'all need to ask yourself your question. What keeps interrupting your ability to talk to God and commune with God and worship God? Let me close this little homily with this third thing, which is right here in verse number 18. It says, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. He says, if you want to know what, guilt, what God's will is about your, your drama, your circumstances, he, 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 you might not know which way to turn, which way to go, what to do, what to say. You may not know that. But here's what we do know, that the will of God is for you to give thanks. Oh, y'all missed a great spot. To... That word, the, the word give thanks is one Greek word took two English words to describe it, and it means to have an attitude of gratitude. To, to be grateful and express that gratitude. To be grateful and express the gratitude. Let me give it to you again. It means to be grateful and express it. Now, now here's why that's important, because some of y'all never say nothing to God. I think I get a little frustrated if I provided food for my wife, clothes on her back, roof over her head, and she ain't never say nothing. I want her to express her gratitude every now and then. I want my kids to every now and then say, thank you, Daddy. It would be nice when the phone ring and one of my kids' names pops up on the phone for me to hear them say, not can I have, but I wish I could hear them say, 
Can I thank you, Daddy, for how good you've been to me? I'm just saying. Be grateful and express it. It's, it's a, give thanks means express gratitude. Listen, everybody in here has something to which they could give God praise and thanks for. I don't have to know your name. I don't have to know what's going on in your life. But one thing I know is that we don't have to go very far to find something for which you ought to give God some thanks for. Somebody say, well, Pastor, based on all the drama I've gone through, how can I give God thanks? Why should I give him thanks? I'm going through hell. I'm, I've been crying all night. I, I don't know how my circumstances are going to turn out. How or why can I give thanks to God? Here's why. First of all, you can do it and you ought to do it and you'll be able to do it because first of all, God allowed the challenges in your life. He didn't, he's not the author of it, but he permitted it. And, and guess what? You ought to thank God that he, he saw the drama coming. <laughs> Y'all excuse me for a second. He saw it headed in your direction. And he made an assessment that he knew that he had already put enough in you in order to handle what it is you're about to go through. So he gave it permission to step up in your life because he knew the devil thought it would take you out, but he knew that you wouldn't let it take you out. Woo! Somebody say, the devil thought it would kill me. The devil thought it would take me out. The devil thought it would destroy me. But instead of taking me out, I'm giving him praise. I'm thanking the Lord because he knew I could handle it. Tell your neighbor, he knew I could handle it. He allowed it. He knew I could handle it. He's already put enough in me to deal with it. I got everything I need in me to weather the storm. You, you, you already have enough in you by the grace of God to handle every storm that comes your way. That's enough to shout about right there then. And listen here, I was, I do not watch this show, but it's been all over the news about the conclusion of Tuesday night's Dancing with the Stars. And the guy who, the couple that won, the guy, J.R. something, huh? Martinez. See, we got some Dancing with Stars watchers up here. I didn't even see the show. I just saw all over the news, and I looked at this man who had been in war, who's, who almost died from burns, who's gone through over 30 surgeries, and when you look at him, you can see where his skin and parts of his body has melted, but I saw him on television over and over again, giving God shout and, and thanks and praise for him winning, but wait, I'm thinking about when he was in the storm, and in the fire when he almost lost his life what I recognize and what I began to thank God for for him is that God saw Tuesday night in his future while he was back there in the storm and some of y'all need to know you got a Tuesday night win down the road it does not yet appear what you shall be but there is a victory in your future Don't judge your future by your presence, but recognize that this is just one step along my journey to going to what God has prepared for me. You have a win in your future.
Let me close. With this, I skipped over the most important part. Verse 18 says, not only to give thanks for everything, but it says, in everything. In. Not when you get out of it. Here's maturity right here. Not after you've gone through it and come out on the other side and you saw that everything has worked out. No, 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 no. He, he, he say, while you are in it. When the, when the storm is raging, when the fire is burning on all sides, when you're being misunderstood and lied upon, when you're being criticized on every side, while you are in it. That's the sign of maturity that you've learned to worship and give thanks while you right smack in the middle. Now don't get me wrong. He didn't say give thanks for everything. I'm not telling you to give thanks for it. There's some stuff you in that you ain't thankful for. Amen. But hold up. I can be thankful in it even though I'm not thankful for it. I don't know who I'm talking to today. But God's measuring your ability, your maturity. He's, he's, he, he, he is measuring your ability. And I suspect that the people I need to be preaching to are not even here. Because I think we got the thankful crowd here. I, I think we got the in everything crowd in the camp. So here's what I need you to do. I need you to go back to all the jokers that you know attend this church. Call them up, tweet them, face, book, page, Facebook, Facebook them, text them, call them, and ask them, I wonder, are you able to give thanks in everything? Somebody say, in it. Tell two or three people in it, in it, in it. Say in it, in it, right in the middle of it, right smack in the gist of it, right when you feel like throwing up your hands and walking away, right when tears are flowing down your face, right when there's questions in your mind about what the outcome is going to be, right, right when you're in it. Give him thanks. So let's just take a moment. That's all I wanted to say. I took longer than I had planned. But I just want us to have that deep in our hearts. Let's give him thanks while we're here. Today's dynamic message from Pastor Jenkins is one that has the power to change your life. But it can only do so if you have a heart and soul that belong to Jesus Christ. Perhaps you want to be able to make such a claim, but you don't know how. It's simple. You just have to confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and rose again with all power. Your sins are now forgiven and you're part of the family of God. Welcome. Maybe you're already saved and in need of a church home, one that will nurture your growth and development as a Christian. Or perhaps you were once in fellowship with God but have since drifted away and are ready to return to your first love. Whatever the case, We'd love to have you become a part of the First Baptist family. Simply contact us at 301-773-3600 or visit our website at www.fbcglenarden.org for more information on any one of our four convenient services or our 100 plus ministries designed to meet your most intimate needs. First Baptist Church of Glenarden, where God is developing dynamic disciples. <laughs>